Hey friends, welcome to the part 13. We are looking at real certification questions for AWS security speciality. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. Let us move into the questions. By the way, I have just uploaded part 12 in the Cloud Kernel and Cloud Ninja member areas. You can click the join button in the link below given in the description. Let's look at this one. So just like Infosys, there is a team called Infosec. And what have they done? They have created a rule. They are telling that only approved AMIs can be used. What are AMIs? So suppose you are creating your EC2 instance, you install Linux, you install other softwares like Word, um, maybe some other tools like Python and notebooks. Some other stuff like BI products like uh, ClickSense, Splunk, so many different things. So what you can do is you can install everything. You can create a machine image out of it so that next time you don't have to install these individual components. That is called machine images. It is supported and maintained by AWS. You can also create AMIs and put them in the marketplace to market it and earn money out of it. So in an organization, anybody can create an AMI and that's why InfoSec is saying that, boss, you need an approval. So you want to ensure compliance with this mandate. So the first option says that we will terminate all EC2 instances. Why? Do you know that all EC2 instances are using unapproved AMIs? Do you know that? No, right? Then why will you terminate all EC2 instances? And this is wrong. Then B is also wrong. It is telling boss patch all running instances. Why did anybody tell you that all instances have this problem of unapproved AMI? First, you will have to give a solution to know which which EC2 instance has this problem. How will you know it? You will deploy config rules and you will check all running instances for compliance and see which ones are not using approved AMIs. Once you have that list, then you can decide what to do. But the number one job is first identify which ones have problem. See, CloudWatch logs are not used to understand if AMI is approved or not. What are CloudWatch logs used? Metrics like CPU utilization, uh, RAM usage. Those are the different metrics. AMI, whether it is approved or not approved, that is not a metric. So this will not work. This metric filter will not work at all wrong choice of product so this is my final answer the aws config just some more bits on it it helps you with assessing auditing your configurations a very common use is like you have ec2 instances and it got modified the configuration got modified by two three people so you want to know when what why it happened config will tell you that Okay, now let us jump to the next question. This is the next one. So this question, you have IAM user access keys. Access keys are long-term credentials. And if these long-term credentials, if someone has not used it for three months, for example, you as a user have not used that application for three months, not never logged in, then they are saying that for such people, the access has to be disabled. Now, how to do that? The first option says that you choose the IAM service and select users, review the access age, key age. Just reviewing the age doesn't mean that it will you will disable it. What after that? So this solution is not complete. Hence, it is wrong. Let us look at option B. It is telling that define an IAM policy and it will check if the key age is more than 90 days. It will deny access. It is not about denying access. It is we have to disable it. Okay. So if disabling is different and denying is different, so this is wrong. Option C is correct because you have to do three things first you have to generate the credential report you have to get the report and you have to update the access keys because you want to disable it if you want to disable the access keys you will have to use the update access key api this is my answer and this is common sense right 
the last option will not work because cloud watch is used for alarm metrics and not for these kind of things to identify the age of the access keys so this option is totally wrong other thing always remember if aws already gives you an option which is built in do not create a custom solution option d is a custom solution Op option c is a built in solution so this is my final answer let's lock this so let us jump to this question now see here this question is about inbound and outbound rules what is the pain point it is saying i have the inbound from this ip but i do not have outbound rules so first thing we have to do is add a outbound rule where why we should add it where we are the question is talking about network acl so we should add it in the network acl so that means options a is wrong option a is wrong they are not talking about network acl option this b is also wrong they are not talking about network acl now between c and d one would be the answer so what is the fnl port range that is what we need to understand first you can pause this video read this paragraph carefully this is about ephemeral ports and like we know ephemeral means temporary or short lived now we will make use of ephemeral ports because we will not use http port because we will get restricted to a certain range of ports ephemeral that means we can use a wide range of ports and this is our solution okay so this is my final answer friends if you have not subscribed yet please do so this will help you help with the clearing of certifications this brings us to the end of this part do not forget to join uh, the, the members area cloud member cloud kernel or cloud ninja by the way part 12 has been uploaded in the member area see you in the next part